It was that time of year again. The heat of summer was replaced by the cool air of fall, and I was ready to spend some time with Mother Nature. I could already hear the sound of water rushing over the rocky riverbed and the crisp leaves crunching under my shoes as I hiked the narrow trail in search of the perfect place to set up camp. This was my second year camping alone, and it gave me a chance to reflect and reset. I pulled into a small parking lot that was designed for hikers. There were only eight spaces available, but no more than three cars were ever parked when I came out for a camping trip. There were two different hiking trails, and I usually hiked the trail to the right, but decided to go to the left this year. After adjusting my backpack and locking my car, I headed down the trail. My dad always took me camping out here when I was a kid. We would set up the tent, and then he would start the campfire. I enjoyed roasting hot dogs and marshmallows while he told me creepy stories. He would swear they were real to get a rise out of me, but I never believed him. Sure, Dad, was always my response. During our last camping trip, he told me a story about a modern-day witch hunt. A family moved into town, and their daughter was the quiet type. She wore black all the time and stayed to herself. The kids made jokes at her expense and threw things at her in class, until one day she had had enough and threatened her bullies. A few days later, one of the boys was in a serious car accident. The kids swore the girl in black put a curse on him and they plotted their revenge. It was a Friday afternoon that the girl was kidnapped. A group of kids carried her into the woods, gagged and bound, then tied her to a tree. She was later found still tied to the tree with her mouth sewn and a pool of blood around her feet. The murder was covered up and the kids were off the hook. Rumor has it that the kids' parents were important figures and the case was dropped quickly. When the police didn't bother to investigate further, the girl's parents moved out of town. They swore to pursue justice, but nobody heard from them again. Less than a year later, the kids went missing one by one. Their bodies were all found in the woods, tied to a tree, mouth sewn, and a pool of blood around their feet. Every night, hikers could hear the murders play out. My father said it was off the left trail. I wanted to take that trail, but he always refused. I think he actually believed those stories. This year, I wanted to know. The light around me dimmed, and I knew it was time to set up camp. I hadn't found a place yet, but decided to actively look for one now. I moved off the trail, but made sure I didn't wander away too far. I didn't know this side of the woods, and I didn't want to get lost. A few yards away, there was an empty space between a few trees, just wide enough for my tent, but I would have to keep my campfire small. In the distance, I could hear other hikers walking. It sounded like they were looking for a place to set up as well. Though I enjoyed the company of fellow campers, I wanted some time to myself, and I hoped they wouldn't come in my direction. Setting up my tent only took a few minutes, then I hastily set up a spot for a campfire before the sun finished setting. A scream broke the silence in the air, causing me to startle. One of the hikers must have crossed a spider or a snake. Hiking wasn't for everyone, I thought with a chuckle. Then the rustling of leaves grew louder and muffled sobs carried in the silence. My heart started pounding while concern for the hiker conflicted with my self-preservation. The sobs were accompanied by laughter and excited chatter. I tiptoed to get closer to the commotion, then crouched behind a bush and peered around. We'll show you what happens to witches! It was a male voice, followed by more chatter. Get the rope! Another boy said. Here, responded a girl. I moved forward some more and finally found who I was looking for. There were three boys and two girls, all around the age of seventeen. They tied the girl's hands behind the tree. Each of them took a turn punching and spitting on her. I wanted to do something, but I was in shock. This was exactly like the story my father had told me. This couldn't be real. Finally, one of the girls pulled out a needle and thread, suggesting they sew her mouth shut so she couldn't speak any more curses. The girl in black begged through the cloth in her mouth, screaming once they removed it. One of the boys punched her, knocking her unconscious for a moment. I crawled behind the bush to get closer. The girl howled pleas of mercy through heavy sobs. They pushed the needle through her lips and pulled the thread as tears streamed down her face until she finally passed out. 
When they were done, a boy suggested they get out of there. I wanted to run to her, but one of the boys turned back from the others. You're not hurting anyone else, witch, he said, stabbing her in the gut. Then again, What are you doing? One of the girls had turned around with a horrified look. If anyone finds out... We're fine. Let's get out of here. He pulled her in the direction of the others. My heart was pounding against my chest and my head was foggy. Once the kids were gone, I jumped up from the bushes and ran in the direction of the tree, taking a moment to look back. I didn't want the kids to see me. When I looked back to the tree, nobody was there. I assumed I had walked to the wrong tree, so I turned slowly to each of the trees around me. The air was silent except for the light wind that rustled through the leaves and the birds chirping. What the hell? I said under my breath. It was as though nothing had taken place. I blinked and surveyed the area once more. When I was about to give up, I felt a cold hand on my shoulder and whirled around. The hair on my arm stood straight and I could hardly breathe. There was nothing there. I was the only one in the small clearing, but I distinctly felt someone touch me. I let out a quiet laugh, shaking my head. My dad's stories were getting to me. I went back to my camp and started pulling out food for dinner. I stuck a hot dog at the end of a stick and hung it over the campfire just like old times. My thoughts trailed off to the work I had waiting for me when I got back and the friends I needed to visit. Poor Lauren had been waiting to hang out for almost a month, but work had taken over my life. After eating dinner, I put the food away and climbed into my tent. My sleeping bag was cool to the touch at first, but quickly warmed up with my body heat. I reached out to turn off the lantern and snuggled further down into my sleeping bag, closing my eyes. I started dozing off when a scream jolted me awake. No! Please! A female's voice pleaded. Joanna! A male's voice carried louder and I could hear the rustling of leaves. Goosebumps covered my arms and I was frozen in the decision between checking it out and staying where I was. I stayed in my sleeping bag and listened some more. You're dead! My dad said you were dead! The boy cried. No! No, stop! My curiosity took over and I was out of my tent, walking slowly on my haunches and peeking through each bush again. The moonlight was bright enough that I didn't need my flashlight. It would have drawn too much attention anyway. The protest became more muffled, making it more difficult to find the source. The crunch of leaves and another muffled grunt led me to a male and a female, each tied to a tree. Their heads hung low, but in the dim light, it appeared their mouths were sewn shut. I looked to their feet where the moonlight reflected off a pool of blood. My mind raced, deciding what to do next. When I turned around, my stomach folded over and I lost my breath. I stared at the pale girl in front of me. Her eyes were as dark as her hair and her mouth was sewn shut. She caught me as a witness to this horrific scene, but she didn't move, only stared. I looked down at her hands that were covered in blood and her tattered black dress. My legs finally decided to move and I darted past her to my camp. It was too dark to pack up and move out, but I couldn't stay. Another scream filled the air. It was another male. She wasn't after me, but what could happen if I stayed? Having no other choice, I crawled back into my sleeping bag and listened to the screams fade one by one counting each one until I reached five. The rest of the night was filled with silence. I can't say I slept well that night. When I woke up the next morning, I decided to pack up and head to my car. I would never take the left trail again. After taking down my tent, I turned to grab my backpack. A movement behind a tree caught my eye and I found her staring back at me. My breath caught in my throat and I spun back around to grab my bag. A shriek escaped me when I saw the formation of small stones spilling out a very specific message. Why didn't you help me? I yanked up my bag and ran, my feet moving faster than I thought possible. The rustles of leaves followed behind me for the first few feet. Every few yards I saw her in the woods. I broke into a sprint when my car came into view, this time refusing to look around. I opened the driver's side door and threw my bag into the passenger seat. I sped until I reached the ranger station and told the two men what happened. They looked at each other with a grimace. You actually stayed out there? One of them asked. 
Nobody actually stays out there, the other ranger said as though I was out of my mind. Ever since my daughter Joanna was killed out there, I refuse to walk that trail, the other said. Evan watched the whole thing that night. He tried to tell someone, but nobody listened. Then the five kids started disappearing one by one. The first one said to the other, Evan who? I asked. Walker. Why? The ranger narrowed his eyes at me. That's my dad, I said before walking out. My dad knew the details of that story because he was there. That's why he wouldn't take the left trail. What would happen if she saw him again knowing he did nothing to help her? Did she know I was his kid? Could she see the resemblance? I would never know because I would never return to those woods again.